Well, everybody, uh, we are officially at go time. So um, why don't we all offer each other one more big happy Pentecost? Happy Pentecost. Happy Pentecost, happy Pentecost. Yeah. Pentecost everybody. <laughs> Um, and at some point we're going to have to sing happy birthday to the church, but maybe also happy birthday to Meg's dad because he's turning 99 and we'll have oh, a prayer for him and shortly. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And, Kate, and Kate Wishard's dad too. It's her dad too. That's right. Kate and Meg's dad. And um, we do have a couple of announcements for the life of the church. So let's see, let's just run through those before we do our gathering music. I want to, as ever, thank <laughs> Billy for his work with the choir, Alan for his beautiful musical compositions, which he keeps just sort of, they flow out of him and he sends them to us and um, he's supporting two churches in, in a lot of different ways right now. Uh, Chris, who's in the background being the producer here, and Heather Pearson gives us permission to use some of her music today. There is also a young musician whose name is Keydron Bryant, and he, his work has been featured on the news and we will hear his song as well today. And so I'm just gonna acknowledge him right up front here as being a contributor um, because his work is out there. We're gonna share it because his message is important. And then I want to just jump to announcements. So would someone from the plant sale team give us the really happy news about yesterday? So this is Jeanette. I want to first of all thank everyone who gave plants, donated plants, and people who came and bought plants, or a lot of people just made outright donations, which was phenomenal. And in the in the past, well, let me say we had a beautiful day. Every most, I would say 99% of our people wore masks. It was very friendly. I think people were excited to be outside. Um, they were looking for a way to support the community. And in the past, our I think our highest fundraiser was between eight and nine hundred dollars. Yesterday we raised seventeen hundred. Yeah. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Thanks. And do you want to say how that's being used, Jeanette? Yes, it's, it will, and, and we also received canned good donations because the, um, all of the donations, monetary and canned goods, are going to um, food insecurities. The canned goods will go to the Bartlett Jackson Food Pantry and to the Way Station, and the financial donations will go to the Way Station, the Bartlett Jackson Food Pantry, and also to Honduras Hope, um, an organization that Meg supports. And um, the country of Honduras is experiencing difficulties as was, um, is Zimbabwe. But since we had already sent money to Zimbabwe, we decided to include Honduras Hope this time. Thank you very, very much, everybody. And just as a reminder in Honduras, they were eating the seed crop that that Meg had seen them actually drying out on the hillside before that was supposed to be their spring planting crop and it became their food source so you know that robs them of future harvests so this is happening in a lot of places so this is to help in that regard as well as locally we're going to make a tremendous difference and I think last week you did mention Jeanette that we we sent money to our partner community in Zimbabwe ahead of the curve. Their nation is literally out of food. You can't buy it because there's nothing on the grocery store shelves. We sent money early enough that their emergency team was able to purchase cooking staples like millet, I think, and cooking oil for 93 families in that community before it was gone. So we're keeping people from starvation, literally. Okay, other announcements for the life of the church. We're, our cocktails and Christian conversations are going to continue on Fridays. 
We are next week going to invite people that are participating to bring their ideas about what they would like to discuss going forward on Fridays and exactly what kind of format, because we're getting that place where we, you know, maybe you want to, well, we don't know, in-person Zoom mixes, who knows what it's going to look like, but we're going to start having those conversations as well. Tomorrow, there are a few things that I just want you all to be aware of. One is that tomorrow has been declared a national day of mourning and lament by mayors across the city, as well as interfaith communities, uh, due to the fact that we have gone over 100,000 deaths because of COVID. So it is to pause and acknowledge the lives that have been lost due to the pandemic. So at noon tomorrow, the bell ringing will actually be part of the vigil that we are holding about this loss and making space for it. So we'll, if you, if you come to the church because we're ringing the bell, wear your mask and observe social distancing, but we will have a way for people to share their prayer concerns if you know or have lost people to COVID. And um, also four o'clock tomorrow evening, or tomorrow afternoon, the Young People's Choir, we believe, is going to get kick-started. It got, it got a postponed because of Memorial Day. So we're hoping for some good energy there. So happy things and, and sorrowful things going on. We know there are prayer concerns. We will name those during the service. I'm going to move us into a time of centering. So please, please breathe in enter a place of contemplation and listen to Heather Pearson's one breath at a time meditation as we start the service. I'm learning how to love. I'm learning how to give. I'm learning how to trust. I'm
So we thank Heather Pearson for her offering of that music and how apropos today to think about breath which is one way that we think about the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it is a theme that is being played out in many ways right now in this country. So it is quite relevant to what we are thinking about and talking about. I would invite you now to join me in the call to worship. Although you will be muted, we do have um, our voices to lead us and the words for the call to worship will appear here on the screen. That's just to get us in place and remind us what it's like when we get to be together. And now we enter the time for prayers of the people. And as you know, to, to somewhat contain our prayers, we have asked that people would send the prayer requests ahead of time. Um, so we did receive some prayer requests last night and this morning and the names won't surprise you. We think about this, the family of Dick who died this week in a very tragic bike accident and his wife, Claire, and his children and his grandchildren. We think about Jean who is also facing trauma and her whole family who are supporting her and sorrowful and all the friends and family and loving community that felt this loss down to our bones. We think about the life of George Floyd, who has set off so many protests around the country. And again, we will talk about this, but we lift up George in our prayers and we lift up all those who are affected which is really all of us we lift up always those who have been affected by covid those who died those who have survived it those who are responding to it those who have become essential workers and shown us what significant roles people play in our lives that we hadn't even realized before. We lift up the lives of our emergency responders, the people that have been on the front lines all along and the people that are trying to make sense and keep us safe even now. Our emergency EMTs, our fire department, our police force, and the military serving here and in other parts of the world. We ask, and again, we will think on this for ways to be working in unity with the community and saving the community. We think about our partner communities in Zimbabwe and Honduras. We think about people who are living with complex diagnoses in our own church, our own village, our own valley that have been made more difficult because of COVID. We lift up Cheryl, we lift up Maureen, we lift up Claire, we lift up many whose names aren't public, who are living with cancer and other challenging diagnoses. Judy is living with cancer. We, we lift up those that we love, whether we have said your name or not. We think about the people in our community that are recovering, Richard, Paulette, and others who are recovering from things like strokes. And because we need hope, I want to lift up again Meg's father, Ralph, 
who is celebrating 99 long, long years of life. Um, gratitude for birthdays, birthdays for human beings and birthdays for our church. And I think it would be a wonderful time right now to unmute yourself. You're gonna all have to do your own unmuting because apparently I really can't control you. Um, all I could do is like click on each one of you. So unmute yourselves, we're gonna to sing together and it'll be messy and fun. Happy birthday to, to the church and to Ralph, okay? So you guys ready? <laughs> unmute yourself, be courageous. And here we go, one, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's recorded, Meg, so you can play it for your dad. <laughs> <laughs> you might go on tour with that song all right so now i'm gonna ask everybody to mute again if you can i will try to do it but <laughs> some of you are renegade Sorry, my, my, it keeps muting me too. Um, please gather in prayer. Oh, holy God, we ask for your presence. You poured yourself out into the world, into the life of Christ, who then was broken open in his own life, in his death, in his resurrection. And then in the lives of those who first followed him. And today that is what we celebrate, that the presence of the Holy Spirit comes and endures and abides with us. And that love keeps giving itself and giving itself and giving itself. That breath fills us and moves us in ways that we didn't expect. And we ask that that breath and that inspiration, that restless energy will be with us here in a healing way in a hopeful way, in the communities that are on fire all over this country, in the lives that have been forever changed, in the lives that have been lost in these times, both here in our own community and across the nation. Remind us the ways that we are different from each other in beautiful and strong ways and the things that bind us together in common because we are all your children. Let us learn to love and celebrate our diversity and to respect all life and to build up and to not tear down. Holy God be with us. We offer you now a moment of silence and then we pray together. And now I ask that you will all pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Nicely done. So you guys are all showing off your red. You got your pinks, your reds, your whatever colors on. If you, of course, as many as possible. Like I said, if you don't have reds and pinks on, you'll end up leaving with a pink shirt by the time you're done this morning because it'll just rub off on you anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I missed one of my own cues. 
<laughs> so immediately after the scripture, we're just going to, we're just going to watch a moment of candles being lit and we're going to talk about that. So please, please listen now to the scripture from read from Acts 2. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, and verses 37 through 39. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. So ends the reading. So everybody, I want us to just take a moment and watch this um, exercise that Sandy and I went through, lighting flames. I'm hoping that Chris can make this happen. I'm sorry to do it out of order, but I think it's possible. Um, I
So I just want to ask you all to join me in prayer. O holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The reason it was important to share with you that image of those flames is that they're very domesticated flames, right? They're, they're little tiny tea light candles in paper flowers in a shallow pool of water with the wind rustling the branches overhead. And everything about that was meant to be safe. And yet, the Holy Spirit rushing down on the people in the upper room where the followers of Christ gathered did not have an experience that felt safe to them. It felt overwhelming. It felt like a revolution of perspective and thought and experience. And it feels a little bit like our world is having that experience right now as well. You know, it uh, feels like our world is on fire right now because it is, literally. Our cities are being burned to the ground. Shops are, are burned down. Lives are at stake. My daughter called this morning from New York to say that the protests were spreading through different neighborhoods in New York City as well as other neighborhoods. And so in these times that we're already challenging, in a week where our own village was overturned by the loss of Dick and the trauma within Jean's family as well. Now we have these other concerns that cannot be ignored. We had young people in a car driving through Jackson Village today because they felt they needed to do something and they had Black Lives Matter banners wrapping their car because they felt that it was so important for people to pay attention. And that is what the arrival of the Holy Spirit is intended to do. It is intended to call us to a place of paying attention. To pay attention to what's happening in our own backyards. To pay attention to what's happening in our valley and in our village. And to understand that there are threads that tie every one of these events together. And so I want to revisit the scene with Christ and his followers and then tie it back to our times. I'm going to invite us to look at a small series of images that will plant us in the origins of Pentecost and bring it forward into our times today. The very first image is an image of a painting that is set during the Jewish festival of Shavuot. This is the festival that was celebrated at the time of the Pentecostal experience in Jerusalem. It was a time of pilgrimage. There were people in the city from all over the place, as well as the city already being a very urban center with citizens that had their their roots from many different nations who spoke many different tongues and this feast of shavuot celebrated the giving of the law to moses and so there was already this sense of god having come down to them from the mountain and being present among god's people and then that experience is revisited and renewed and changed when it happens again in the upper room and the next image shows us where we might think about the upper room actually being located. This is the same upper room where it is purported that the Last Supper took place on the night before Christ was arrested and crucified. And if you look at the, this map, this is an ancient map from the 1400s of the holy city of Jerusalem. Up in the top left corner is the campus where they believe the upper room was located and the next image shows us what the interior of that room looks like today 
with those very fancy columns and you can even see a little stained glass window peeking back there because it's used as a sacred space now. And you'll see some reference to this place in the images that come next. The next image shows us very early artistic renditions of what Pentecost might have looked like. This room is big enough to hold 120 people. So it was not just the 12 men, the 11 original followers of Christ and Matthias who had been invited to join them to take the place of Judas who had obviously left them after he betrayed Christ. It is traditionally believed that Mary was present in that room among the other followers. And it's very important to the artist as we go to the next image, you'll see a repetition of this theme that Mary is present and receives the Holy Spirit along with the other followers because she is the mother of God. She gives birth to Christ who gives birth to the church. And so her presence becomes symbolic of the birth of the church and the love of God flowing out first from the body of Mary and then from this room and the lives and experiences of these people down across the centuries to us. In the next image, we'll see a tiny little detail from a missile. This is a miniature painting in somebody's private missile from the Middle Ages. And then in the next image, we're going to see uh, Giotto's idea of what just the 12 followers receiving the Holy Spirit might have looked like. And then we're going to jump forward through time to the next image. This is a picture, or this is another tiny little image painted that shows St. Peter delivering the very first sermon. This was part of the Acts 2 scripture that we read, and there he is preaching the very first sermon delivered not by Christ, but by one of his followers. And he's standing in the company of his other disciples, the first original followers of Christ, in their company, in their community, when he delivers a sermon. And then we move again forward in time. In the next image, we see two icons from Russia. And then we move to paintings from different places in the next image. One on the right is a ceiling image. This is another favorite motif of to see the Holy Spirit coming down out of the heaven to the followers. What I like about this contrast is you see on the left that the followers are a little disrupted by the Holy Spirit. They're on the floor. They're, they're in all different kinds of positions. They're looking a little distraught. Mary looks pretty composed, but everybody else is looking a little overwhelmed. And on the right in the ceiling, they look very, quite orderly. So these are different ideas about exactly what happens when the Spirit of God flows down on you. Then we move forward in time again. Here's another image that's a ceiling detail. This is a mosaic. I just want you to see the Pentecost depicted in different ways. Remember that we think of the Holy Spirit as being a creative energy who is inspiring some of these artists too. And you'll see how it changes across time again. And the next image wow, that's pretty different. That's very modern. That's a 20th century image. And the next image is by Sadao Watanabe. And what I want to bring to your attention here again is that in the Acts 2 passage, people spoke in the tongues of other natives, that everyone in that room could understand somebody who was speaking a different language. And in the same way, artists go back into their own contexts and their own traditions and find ways to bring their faith and their beliefs into the framework of their own people. And so Sadao Watanabe here, again, is using folk art traditions from Japan to make his artistic expression relevant to the people in his own culture. And you'll see that yet again in other artistic works as we move forward through time. This is Puchi painting in the 21st century. He again is the Chinese artist, and he has been inspired by Cubist works from the past century and by Renaissance painters, but he brings those into the vernacular of his own Chinese folk art traditions. And then in the next image, we again see the vernacular. We see very simple freeform paintings. They're not masterly paintings, but they show what people imagine the Holy Spirit might look like. 
And in the next image, we see, wow, that is like quite the explosion of color and fire happening there. And then we see in the final few images here, the next is, those are 12 people. This artist is imagining that each of these is a follower of Christ, one of the 12, but notice that they come from multiple cultures, races, ethnicities, possibly even belief systems, and that the Holy Spirit is poured out into each of those bodies and lives and cultures and finds a way to be known to each one of them. And then we have one final painting. And this is the one that I think expresses how we might be feeling right now. There's a woman looking headfirst down at us, and yet we see the feet of somebody else being caught up in the maelstrom of a windstorm. The Holy Spirit is spiraling through this painting and changing the energy for everyone and the perspective for everyone. And now as we, as we come back into community and we look at each other, we think that we, we are now that body of Christ and that we are the expression, the living broken open lives through which the spirit flows. And in a time when it feels like we are burning down our cities, that our lives are being changed in unsustainable, overwhelming ways, I want to remind us what the prophet Joel said that was said again during Pentecost, that my spirit will be poured out on all flesh, that young women and young men will prophesy and see visions and old men will dream dreams and that all people, even the people that have been enslaved, will receive my spirit and speak out and cry out. And I think that what we are hearing out is the crying out of a nation and a world in great distress and great pain. And sometimes at the peril of burning down everything, not just their own lives, but everything around them. But it starts with the loss of breath for George Floyd. Over 60 years ago, James Baldwin was meeting with Bobby Kennedy at Bobby Kennedy's invitation to talk about civil rights movement and concern for the unrest that was going on. And he asked that James Baldwin would bring other movers and shakers from the civil rights movement into a conversation with him. And there was a woman named Lorraine Hansberry. She's the writer who wrote the play Raisin in the Sun and she sat in the room with Bobby Kennedy and she expressed her concern for what was going on in the world. And she particularly expressed her concern over a picture that had just appeared in the news. And this is what she said to him. I am very worried about the state of the nation, which produced a photograph of white cops standing on that Negro woman's neck in Birmingham. Goodbye, Mr. Attorney General. And she left the room. And she left the room because Bobby Kennedy right then had been asked to convey to his brother a request to accompany a little girl who was going to be entering an integrated school down in the deep south. And at the moment, he didn't understand why that gesture might be important, and he declined. But later, Bobby Kennedy was changed by that conversation, and he felt and understood the importance of showing solidarity with the people that had different experiences from his own, and why it was important that they had made that request and that he had sat with them and heard them. Sixty years later, People's breath is still being stolen from them when power is abused. We are still having the same conversation 
And we still need the presence of prophets in our world, singers and artists, and our own children driving around in cars in Jackson to remind us that breath is important and that the breath is the very presence of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here to put life in our bodies, to fill us up and change us. It is not a destructive force. And when breath is stolen from us, something is going wrong. The question that is presented to us in this scripture, in the fires and the protests that are going on all over the country, is are we willing to be changed by what is happening that we may help to change the world? In Camden, New Jersey, the police joined with the protesters in a march and showed unity with them instead of being in conflict or opposition with them. My daughter is calling me from New York City to tell me that neighborhoods are burning. Our children are driving through our own village asking us to pay attention. Our world is full of fires, and yet around us are the fires of hope and creativity. Yesterday, they launched a mission up into space again, the rocket that was harnessed by the energy of many creative minds. And one of the commentators was a black astronaut because people can do amazing things together. And he specifically said, look what happens when we work together. Yesterday at a plant sale where people were hungry for sunlight and hope, we came out and we found the roots of what we need to plant to put in our own soil and we carried it away from each other. We exchanged different species of plants and we shared our lives to put in each other's gardens and in each other's homes. And together we raised hope, sustainable hope, for our own village, our own valley, and other communities. We can burn our world down, or we can walk together, and we can pay attention to the voices that are being raised up, and we can be the flame of hope Change is frightening, it is alarming, but I've had phone calls this week and they were phone calls not about our own headlines, but about the headlines from around the world asking what can we do. Tomorrow we will be ringing the bells for that day of mourning and lament. And among the 100,000 people that have died, a disproportionate number of them are marginalized communities who were greatly exposed and had fewer resources. We can gather together, we can remember, and we can see, and we can raise our voices in conversation, in song, and in hope, and see that what happens in other parts of the world happens here too, and it matters that we are all connected, and that our diversity is a place of strength and hope but only if we see the value in each other and believe that what is happening in our neighbor's backyard is important. I want you to hear now a song by a young artist named Keydron Bryant. Listen to his song and ask yourself again, are you willing to be changed by the presence of the Holy Spirit, to have your perspective overturned because it is only when we are willing to be changed by what is happening that we can then become change in the world. The Spirit has been poured out on Kidron and he cries out and he sings out to us as our very own children do. If our children want to have hope, they have to believe that we care too. Please listen to Keydron and be changed. I'm a young black man Doing all that I can To stand Oh, but when I look around And I see what's being done to my kind 
every day. I'm being hard to this prey. My people don't want no trouble. We've had enough strong goal. I just want to live. God protect me. I just want to live. I just want to live. Thanks be to God. You have all offered your presence in our lives in such meaningful ways. You changed the lives of multiple communities yesterday at that plant sale. And we ask that you will continue to remember how this church is part of hope filling the world, that we are a vibrant presence in our community and that your generosity and your support continues to help us to help others. And so we ask that you will remember in the ways that you have made a commitment to this church that you will continue to give as you are able, either online through jxncc.org or by dropping off your offering at church or sending it in that we may continue to be present to people within our own community. And now I invite you to celebrate how the fire of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit is present in your lives. We are going to sing together a very simple song, This Little Light of Mine. And I want you to know that you are light in the world, that we together are light in the world. We are not alone, and we are light in the world. course we move to our beloved benediction song so we will invite you to sing again our benediction song and then of course afterwards you are more than welcome to hang out for the coffee hour we'll be playing again one of alan's compositions called come let's build and uh that's a pretty great message for today too is the building up versus the burning down
So, uh, you know, things are always a little exciting and the Holy Spirit's always doing a little hiccups and everything. So you guys got to sing it a little bit more than you expected to. And that's all good, too. We are going to move into the music provided by Alan. But if you wish to stay and just chat with each other, we will unmute everybody in about 30 seconds. So please enjoy this composition by Alan called Come Let's Build. And stay if you want to stay. unmute yourselves in order to get to chat because I cannot unmute you. So if you want to say hello to anybody, unmute yourself. Hi, 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 everybody. Hi, Hi Margaret. Hi. Oh, oh, how are you doing? Right. I'm doing better, honey. I'm hanging in there. Good, good, How good. are you doing? I'm doing good. All right. Hi, Ginger. That's all the yeah. yeah. Meg, that was a wonderful article on your father. You know, yes. oh, yes. you know, you know. It was. Thank you. It was fun. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was yeah beautiful. Meg's dad made the paper. Yeah. <laughs> like two pages of the paper. Right. <laughs> Pretty special. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tom Eastman does a wonderful job. He's so attentive. He had yeah. lots of good conversations. Yeah. He's fabulous. Really. That was very I see nice. Miss Sue. Hi, Sue. And I oh, see all of you in By the way, these, these flowers are from Mother's Day. Reverend Gail gave these to me on May 10th, and they <laughs> are still oh, going. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, very nice. Oh, that's great. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Hi, Ray. Yeah. How are you doing, honey? Hey, Kathy. Yes. Hi, Ryan. I miss you on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do a shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Hi, mom. Yeah. My mom's Judy M. She's there on the. She's been calling oh, in most you. weeks. Can't you see oh. resemblance there? Hey, how about <laughs> looking at herself? <laughs> 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 Hi. Hi, Judy. Judy, you must be so proud of your daughter. We love her. I, I, I kind of am proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so proud of her. She That's does why a great I keep job. coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I was just reflecting on the uh, the original. Gail's father and I participated in the original March on Washington in 1963 and mm -hmm. in contrast it was such a peaceful um occasion if somebody bumped into you they apologized and when mm -hmm. we went her father was pastor of a church that said if you get thrown in jail we are not bailing you out <laughs> <laughs> and so we went fully expecting to possibly go to jail we had no idea what that but it was such a peaceful thing to be a part of and you were there to really represent um an ideology it, it was none of the burning of burning of or looting that kind of experience and um it it framed much of our life and her father's pastorate so i just share that with you mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank we you. appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. I see you. Hi, Thanks, everybody. Hi, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and yeah. it's it was great seeing everybody yesterday. Yeah, plant those flowers, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what yeah. I gotta, that's what I got to do today. I got my soil, so. Yeah. Thank you, Gail. Good day. Oh, good day. Happy Pentecost Day. May may the spirit be with you. Thank you. And also thank with you. you. And also with you. Yeah. And thanks to everybody for donating and oh, man. Yeah. the plant sale and buying. That was wonderful. Yeah. And it yeah. was great. We didn't have many things left over and they're slowly <laughs> disappearing. So awesome. I think all they're around. all gone. All is good. good. They're gone. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good day to work outside because of the wind. No bugs. No bugs. <laughs> right. So get outside. Enjoy. Yes. Yes. Uh, don't. Bye, you know everybody. Bye, Sue. Bye, everyone. God bless and thank you for all your Thanks right. again for entertaining us here. Bye. Bye, everybody. Hi, Deanna. Hi, Deanna. Uh, Steve, multiple see generations it. here yeah. on these calls. <laughs> Gail, Gail, tell your daughter we all say hello and uh, say prayers for her. We, we sorry will. the younger generation has to suffer some like this. That's awful. Yeah. Well, I hold on to this song because they're singing too, and that's what we need to hear is their song. They're being creative. Yeah, I wonder what your mother wishes for them after she just gave us that yeah. wonderful few sentences. I really wonder why. Yeah. After so many people tried for 60 years, why has it turned into this? Yeah. Because we have to keep paying attention, right? There's, yeah. We're not done having this uh, uh, change. Change takes a long time, but it has to happen. Yeah. A good day. Yeah. Be well. Good. Be blessed, okay. everybody. Happy Pentecost. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.